to, ki, kita, ko, rai, to come. Here we have the kanji that's seen used in words like to come, kuru. And you can look at that as kind of the key word for this kanji, to come. It has quite a few different readings. Ki, ku, kita, ko, and rai. So here, even in the top 10,000 most useful words, there are five different readings. First, looking at the most useful reading with ku. This is seen used in the verb to come, kuru. And this is taught at the elementary grade in Japan. And really, this word is the main use that you'll see this reading used in. Kuru, to come. But you will also see it used in other words, like for example, motte kuru, to bring. That would be literally to take and to come, to bring something. Or yatte kuru, to come along. Or tsuite kuru. Tsuku is to attach, kuru is to come, so to attach and to come is to follow. The next most useful reading here is ki. This is also taught at the elementary grade in Japan, and here we see this used in words like dekiru to be able to do. Although you'll often see this word just written in hiragana, this is actually used in the kanji for dekiru. Genova Project S wa S. Shippai shita amata no project o fumidai ni tsukuri dasareta. Kanpeki naru monster. Ore ni nani ga dekiru. A little bit more commonly is seen here used in words like dekigoto, a happening or an event. 500 nen mai no dekigoto desu. And of course, you'll see ki being used, for example, in the polite form of kuru, kimas. Or the past tense form of kuru, kita. The next reading we have here is ko. And this is really just seen used in the imperative form of kuru, come. So when you're ordering someone to come, you would say koi. And you'll even see this used in words like kakatte koi, bring it on. Or even used with the nai form, konai. Not come, like you're in 13 Sentinels, to not come here anymore. Now at a higher level use, we have kita, and this is taught at the junior high level, and this is definitely a much rarer reading. This is seen used in words like kitaru, the coming something. Or kitasu, to bring about something. And then finally we have the onyomi reading for rai. And this is normally seen used in kanji compounds. So like for example, rai something would be next dun dun dun. In a way you could also look at this like the coming dun dun dun. Like for example, rai nen next year. You could also look at this kind of literally as the coming year. Or even Raigetsu, next month, or the coming month. And you'll also see this reading for Rai used in words like, for example, Mirai, the distant future. Or Shorai, your future prospects. Or even Irai, since or here forth. 
ここから動けないここにつながっているだからあれ以来ずっとここにいるずっとそのままでいいのか But as you can see with most of the words here, you see this concept of to come. Okay, so now if we have a look at the JLPT rankings as well as the usefulness of all of the words that we've just come across. All of the words that I've covered, I've picked from the most useful words. And so with the first reading, ku, as we can see used in kuru, to come, this is an absolutely essential word here in the top 500 and at the N5 level. This is an incredibly essential reading. And then the next reading we have here is ki. Now this ki reading is also really important because it's both the polite form of kuru, to come, and the past tense form, kimas and kita. So this reading is also really important just for the base form of kuru, to come. So in terms of usefulness, Dekigoto is a little bit more commonly seen, this is at the N3 level, and then used outside of the JLPT, Dekiru is in the top 5,000. However, the word Dekiru to come without using kanji is actually seen at the N5 level. But when you use kanji, it's a little bit more high level when you see it being used. Next, you have Kita, used at the advanced level, and as you can see, these are also not in the JLPT whatsoever. Kitaru is in the top 10,000 just barely, and Kitasu is beyond the top 10,000 most useful words. So these readings are not as important, they're definitely at a higher level. And then we have the reading ko, like seen in konai and koi. And so the negative form of kuru to come, konai, is a pretty common piece of language, so this is about the top 500. And then the reading koi is a little bit higher level and a little bit less used, perhaps in the top 1,500. But clearly, this is a very important reading as it's connected to the base form of kuru to come. And then finally, we have the onyomi reading rai. Like in rainen, next year, and raigetsu, or even shourai and mirai. Now, rainen and raigetsu are top 500 useful words as well as being in the N5, so very, very important reading. Shorai is an N4 piece of language in the top 1,500, so still very important and very commonly seen. And then we have Mirai and Irai at the N3 level in the top 1,500. As you can see, the most essential readings are definitely going to be Ku, Ki, Ko, and Rai. But it's also used at a higher level with Kita. Now, if we take a look at both the radicals for this kanji as well as a mnemonic in order to help you remember this kanji. So, first, this kanji for come can be seen made up by the radicals of both one and the kanji radical for rice. So, one is written on top of the rice. So, perhaps an interesting way of remembering this kanji is quick, come here. There is only one rice left. But feel free to make up your own mnemonic in order to help you remember this kanji. So, there you have it. There's all the readings for this kanji used in the word kuru. To come. Dekiru, Dekigoto, Kimas and Kita, Kitaru and Kitasu, Koi to come, Kakate Koi, bring it on, and Konai to not come, and Rainen, Raigetsu, Midai, Shorai, and Irai. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Hopefully, that helps you get a little bit more familiar with the kanji for Kuru. To come. So, as you can see, it is a very fundamental kanji, but there are some readings that you don't necessarily have to focus on straight away as they're kind of used in a higher level. But just being aware of them when you come across them can help you not get confused. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. I hope you're enjoying learning Japanese. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to help support the channel, then consider coming joining us on the Game Gengo Discord community. You can join either directly through the Game Gengo website or even through Patreon. There's all kinds of perks like getting help with your Japanese study, getting direct help from Japanese speakers, as well as just hanging out, meeting a whole bunch of like minded people, and just having fun learning Japanese. Because that's the real core goal here is just to enjoy learning Japanese, have fun. It's a huge, fun journey, and it's really important just to enjoy that journey. So, thanks so much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll see you again in the next episode. See you guys.